What's up everybody, TCM here, back with another video. And today I wanted to share a story that if you're not familiar with computers could be actually pretty interesting. And even if you are familiar with computers, you might not know this. So recently I was on vacation, went to the beach, got some nice tan lines. You could see my raccoon lines on my face. And one of my favorite things to do when I am on vacation is to go thrift shopping. I love to go to stores and try to find some unique clothes or unique items. And I find that when I'm in a different town, I get to experience different things. This time around, I went to a thrift shop by the beach. Now the thrift shop had some interesting knickknacks, but one thing that I found that was pretty interesting was a very old digital camera. And this digital camera was interesting to me because digital cameras have these little SD cards in them. And I like to get old cameras and old SD cards because oftentimes you can find what was on this. You can find the history behind what is on these SD cards. Now the thrift store told me that the camera was tested, it was good, and that the card was clean. So they told me when I plug this in that there would be nothing there for me to see. No pictures, no history, no data. It's just a empty SD card. And boy, were they wrong. So in this video, we're going to take a look at why this SD card was not truly empty, how we can actually recover photos. And this is a great opportunity to look at forensics and data and how it can be pulled off of a drive. And it's just a great lesson for security and security awareness overall. So we're going to take a quick word from our sponsor, and then we're going to hop on the computer and take a look at what is on this SD card. So stay tuned. Today's video is brought to you by TCM Security Academy, where you can learn to hack without breaking the bank. TCM Security Academy boasts over 13 courses ranging from foundational courses like Linux 101 or Python 101 for hackers. And we even have additional courses related to cybersecurity, such as our famous practical ethical hacking course, our privilege escalation courses, our pen test courses, and even some oddball courses like malware analysis and web application testing and windows forensics and our categories and curriculum are always growing we are 200,000 plus students deep and we are fulfilling our mission of providing courses for no more than 30 dollars a course on top of this we have our all access pass subscription so if you look at our academy you go to the all access membership you click on that what does that get you access to well pretty much everything for the price of one course, you get access to all of our courses in a monthly subscription. And that even includes our PMPT Live video on demand that we're running right now. Now, currently we offer this at $29.99 a month or an annual membership of $299.99 a year. However, for this video, we are giving the first 100 people to use a coupon 20% off. All you have to do is go to enroll now and enter the code all access for me to get your coupon code. Again, the first 100 people to use this code will receive 20% off their first month's membership and access to all of our courses for a total of $23.99. And all of this comes with a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you don't like the courses or the content, you can get your money back. So what are you waiting for? Come check out our courses today. Okay, so I have plugged in the drive and I've just gone to the folder. It has a DCIM folder, which is fairly common for an SD card. And now we can see in here that there is just an empty folder. Well, is this data truly empty? So what happens when you have files in a folder like this? So let's say we had files, a bunch of pictures that we took on our camera on this drive. And then we just went in here, highlighted them all and deleted them. Do they actually go away? Well, the answer is no. When you delete a file from your system, your operating system actually removes what is called a pointer to your data. It doesn't actually delete your data. It simply marks the sectors where your file's data is as available, meaning that the data remains on your drive until it is overwritten. That means we can take a file recovery tool, scan this drive and actually restore the data that we found. So we're actually going to do that. Now, my favorite file recovery tool is a tool called Recova. This tool is free to use and very straightforward. So we open up Recova and I'll put a link down in the description below on how to get this. All you have to do is download the free version 
install it, and then you can go and test this on one of your hard drives. Test it on your main hard drive. See if you can recover any files. It's very interesting if you didn't know about this. So what you can do is you can just hit next, and there's two different types of recoveries that we can do. So I'm gonna show you both of those. Now, in this instance, I wanna know what was on this drive. So I'm gonna look for all files. So it says, what type of file are you trying to recover? I'm gonna say all files. And then it says, do you know where it was at? And I'm gonna say, yeah, it's actually in a specific location. So you could say, I'm not sure, which was search everywhere. But in this instance, I'm just going to pick the I drive that's in here. I'm just gonna actually tell it, hey, go to I, because that's the name of my drive right here. And I'm gonna hit next. And we're just going to do a regular scan. You see that we have enabled deep scan. We'll talk about deep scan in a second. For now, we're just going to start trying to find files. So I'm gonna hit start. And within seconds, it found all of these files. Can actually drag this out a little bit. You can see how old this is. This is from 2009. 2009 here. The state is excellent condition. This looks like it's a bunch of JPEGs, which is interesting. And we can see there's no overwritten clusters in here. All of these files are very easily recoverable. So this dates back to as late as 2010, but as early as 2009. Awesome. There's probably some data in here that could be pulled, including EXIF data as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to recover these files. And I'm going to come in here. I'm just going to click on all the files. I'm going to hit recover. And I'm going to go ahead and choose this drive. Now, it's imperative that you do not choose the drive you're recovering from. You want to recover and restore to a different drive. Because remember, we have those clusters. If we overwrite the clusters, then we're going to be overwriting the files. We could actually damage the files. If we try to select this I drive, it would actually warn us about what we would be doing. In this instance, I'm just going to create a new folder in here. So I'm going to say make new folder. And I'm just going to call this restore. And I'm going to restore back to this. So I'm going to hit OK. And now it's recovering the files. This is only going to take about 10 seconds. We're just going to let it fly through. And then you're going to see we're actually going to recover a ton of files. So if we take a look at this, you can see we've got a total of, let's do a count here, of 41 files that we recovered. And these are pictures. I'm not going to bore you with going through the pictures, nor am I going to try to reveal anybody's face or anything uh, too crazy here. But I just want to show you that we recovered 41 pictures here. And these are files that these people probably thought were deleted, and they really weren't. Now let's run this back. I'm going to actually delete all these files. I'm just going to hit Control A and delete everything. And we're going to run this again. So this time what I want to do is I want to enable that deep scan. So we're going to come back through here and we're going to specify our location of I again for our drive. And I'm going to enable the deep scan. Now this is going to take a minute or two to run. It could take a long time depending on how many files and drives that you have. But in this instance, we're scanning a very small drive, so it won't take very long. So I'm going to start this. It's going to give us a time estimated that it's remaining. It says 10 to 15 minutes. I don't think that's true, but I'm going to pause here and I'll be back when these files are recovered because I want to see how many more files that we get. You can already see that it's found 80 files and it's only 3% done. So I'll see you back in just a second. Okay, so the file recovery is done and it looks like we recovered 135 files this time. And we've got, looks like a bunch more JPEGs, these are all excellent. We also have some Samsung digital camera JPEGs. Not sure what all this entails, but we're going to go ahead and recover this as well. So I'm going to recover just like I did before. I'm going to come into this drive and put it into the restore folder. Hit OK and let these files recover. OK, so the files have been recovered and you can see now we have so many more pictures and artifacts here that were not here before. So what can we take away from what we just saw? Well, we can say that, hey, if we delete a file, that file's not truly gone until that has been overwritten. Now, in the instance of this camera, they just deleted all the files that were on this card, thought it was good to go, and then just donated the camera. And that shows you that these artifacts are left behind. Same thing if you delete files, especially like if you have a sensitive file on your computer and you have like something with your social security number or your personal data and you delete it and then you just get rid of the hard drive, throw it in the trash, or give it to a friend and say, oh, it's gone forever. Probably not unless it gets overwritten. Now, there are tools out there that can help with this. Let's take a look at that really quick. My favorite tool is a tool called Eraser. Just like Recover, I will put the link to Eraser in the description below. 
but we can actually use this tool to schedule an erase. We can come in here, hit new task. We're going to say run immediately. We're going to add data. And we're going to say we're going to target a drive or partition. So I'm going to select this entire drive or partition, though you can just select as you see in here, file, you can do your recycling bin, etc. Now in here, I'm going to go ahead and select that I drive down here. And I'm going to pick an erase method. So we have all different kinds of erase methods. They'll say, hey, we've got the Gutman method, which does 35 passes. That means it overwrites the whole drive with ones and zeros 35 times, leaving no doubt left behind that there's no way to recover files on there. Where you have a one pass down here, which could still leave the possibility of file recovery. Now, the US Department of Defense and other items usually typically run with seven passes. I usually like to just do the Department of Defense here, and I'll just hit OK, and then I'll say OK, and it's going to start running. And now I can safely get this drive erased. I can recycle the drive if I want to. I can take it and donate it, and somebody else can use it, and this other person's data will no longer be there. So I'm doing the right thing and getting rid of this data. These files will never be seen again, and this data will be safely gone. So hopefully this lesson was informative for you. Anytime you delete a file, it's not gone right away. So you want to make sure that if you want your file gone, that you overwrite that drive or at least that partition where that file was stored. That way it is completely erased and cannot be recovered. So if you didn't know this, now you know, and hopefully this adds a little bit more security and privacy to your life. So that is it for this video. As always, my name is The Cyber Mentor, and I do thank you for joining me. Peace out.